Hello and welcome to Professor Pincushion. I'm Tova. Today I'm going to show you how to create a vintage inspired apron. Whether you use adorable fabric or decide to embellish, you'll love how this apron turns out. It's a half apron with a pocket contrasting border and has long ties for brain around to the front. I hope you're as excited to create this apron as I am to show you. Let's go ahead and get started. The nice thing about this project is you really don't need that many supplies. When we talk about fabric, we're going to be using 100% cotton of both. And I like to use two different contrasting fabrics. So for the main part of the apron and for the straps, I'm going to need about 5 eighths of a yard of this one. And then out of my contrasting, I'm only going to be using about a third a yard of fabric. So for both, it's under a yard of fabric. You need one package of rickrack. I'm just using the medium rickrack, but you can use whatever size you want. This is just for decoration, so you don't even have to use it. Fabric scissors. If you have a rotary cutter and mat, that's even better. I also need a sewing gauge. Of course, I'm going to use my sewing machine and my iron. Pins and needles and some all-purpose thread. This is what I cut out for my particular apron. You can mix and match it however you want. So you can take the strips off of this and add it to your contrasting fabric but this is just what I'm doing for my particular example. So from my main fabric, for my main apron piece, I'm cutting out a piece that's 32 inches by 14 inches. Then I'm cutting out two straps, so I'm gonna do this one twice. So the width is three inches, and then I'm just doing whatever the length of the fabric happens to be. So my fabric is 44 inches in width, so that's why I'm doing the 44. The pocket is gonna be five and a half by five and a half inches. For the contrasting fabric, I'm cutting the contrasting bottom strip 32 inches by five, and then the top apron band is gonna be 17 inches by six inches. Now, if you have a rotary cutter and mat, that definitely makes it a lot quicker to cut it out, but you can definitely use scissors as well. The two pieces I'm starting off with is my main fabric for my main apron, and then my contrasting strip that's at the bottom. So this is 32 inches this way, and then 14 inches this way. I'm going to attach the strip to the bottom part of my apron. So if you have directional fabric, you want to make sure you're doing it on the correct way. So place this right side up. Then you're going to take this and line it up with the bottom edge and pin it into place. You're going to make sure you're doing it right side to right side. After you pin it, you can take it to your machine. The seam's going to be at a half inch seam allowance. And you're just doing a regular straight stitch. Don't forget to do a back stitch at the beginning and end. Press your seam allowance so it's going up towards the top of the apron. Then grab your rickrack. We're going to start pinning it so it's going right over that seam line. But I'm not doing it evenly so it lands right in the center or the rickrack line lands right in the center. I'm doing it up just a little bit because we're gonna be sewing straight down the middle of the rickrack, and I wanna make sure that where I stitch is going to land on this side of my apron instead of on this side of my apron because we wanna make sure that we're stitching our seam allowance into place. So as I'm pinning it, I'm just putting it in the center and just putting it up just a little bit so I can make sure that I'm gonna be able to stitch it in the right place. Stitch down the center of the rickrack using a regular straight stitch. Next we're going to do a narrow hem on the two sides of the apron. So it's going to be this side and then it's going to be this side over here. To do the narrow hem, look at the wrong side. You're going to take the fabric edge, fold it a quarter of an inch. I would press it and then fold it a quarter of an inch again and press it again. Don't forget to put in as many pins as you need. Now where we have the rickrack, it's a, it is a little thick, so it might be a little bit hard, but you can fold it a quarter of an inch and then fold it again a quarter of an inch. You're just gonna have to do the best you can in this area, but if it's not perfect, that's fine too, because it is on the inside of the apron. I'm sewing the narrow hem into place looking at the right side, just so I can guarantee it's gonna look really neat. I'm doing about an eighth of an inch away from the edge. Now when it comes to getting over the rickrack, sometimes it may get caught right on the lip of the foot. 
So I'm gonna get as far as I can, put my needle down, lift my foot up, and once it starts to have trouble getting over that hump, another thing you can do is use a clearance plate, or for me, I'm just gonna use this little piece of cardboard, and place it behind the needle underneath the foot, and that kind of sort of levels the foot out, so it's not necessarily going at an angle like this, but more level, and that should really help. You're going to repeat the process for doing the bottom edge, also doing a narrow hem. So again, you're gonna fold up a quarter of an inch looking at the wrong side, and then you're gonna fold up another quarter of an inch and then stitch that in place looking at the right side. Next, we'll move on to the pocket. So this is five and a half by five and a half inches. Flip it over so you're looking at the wrong side and at the top of the pocket, if you have directional fabric, you'll just designate which side is gonna be the top. If it's non-directional, then it doesn't really matter. But you're just gonna take one side and you're gonna fold it a quarter of an inch and press it. On the same side that you pressed a quarter of an inch, so the top of the pocket, now you're gonna look at the right side, take this edge and you're gonna fold it over three quarters of an inch. You can go ahead and press it again. On this side, you're gonna sew a quarter inch seam allowance on this side and on this side. And you only have to go from the top edge to the bottom folded edge here. You don't have to go this whole length. So from here to here and do it again on this side. Next, you're gonna take this and you're going to flip it over so it's going on the back side like this. But before you do that, you might wanna just trim off the corners here and here, making sure not to actually cut into your stitches. So that way you'll have a little bit of a crisper corner when you actually flip it all the way out and then I would press along the top. If you look at the back of the pocket, you'll notice the sides kind of fold over about a quarter of an inch. So we're just gonna continue that. So on each side, you're gonna fold over a quarter of an inch, do the same thing here. You're going to press it, and then you're going to do the same thing on the bottom. So just press up a quarter of an inch. You're gonna stitch on the three sides, so this side, this side, and this side, doing it an eighth of an inch away from the folded edge. But I would look at the right side when you're stitching it, just so you can ensure it's gonna look as nice and neat as you want. I wanna add some rickrack to my pocket. So I'm gonna place it about a half inch down from the folded top though, because when I stitch it into place, I wanna make sure that I'm at least stitching here and not stitching down here. So about right there. And I'm doing a little bit extra, so before I stitch it into place, I can at least wrap it in the back so it'll look really nice and neat. And then just as before, you're gonna go just a straight stitch right down the center. Place your pocket onto your apron, so it's the right side of the apron to the wrong side of the pocket. You can really place your pocket anywhere you wish. I prefer to have mine off to one side, about four inches from one edge, but it's really up to you. Once you have the placement, go ahead and pin it, and then you're gonna take it to your machine and stitch the three sides again. Obviously, you don't wanna stitch the top because that's gonna close your pocket, but you wanna do it on that eighth inch line again so we don't have a lot of stitches showing. Now we're gonna move on to the straps. Take both straps, you're gonna fold them in half lengthwise and you're going to pin the raw edges together. On one end of each strap, you're gonna measure over an inch and a half, make a mark about a quarter of an inch from the raw edge here, and then you're gonna draw a diagonal line to the corner. You could either do that with a fabric marker or with a pencil. Take your straps to your sewing machine and you're gonna sew a quarter inch seam allowance all along the end, but when you get here, you're gonna pivot and sew to the corner. So that's gonna give you an angled look at the end of your strip. After you finish stitching, trim off this extra area close to your stitches, but not actually cutting into your stitches. Turn each strap right side out. So the end that I have the angle, I'm gonna pull these edges apart, I'm going to tuck it inside best I can. And then I'm just using the blunt end of a skewer or if you have a knitting needle, something like that, I'm gonna put that in there and pull the fabric over it and it'll start working its way through. So this is an easy way that you could turn this inside out or right side out. After you turn it right side out, give it a good press and then we're gonna do a top stitch on all the finished edges. So it's gonna be both the lawn edges, this angled edge and the other lawn edge, and you're gonna stitch really close to the edge. 
the top stitch is going to give our straps a really finished look. That's why we do it. It's more decorative. And you're just doing a regular straight stitch. Don't forget to back stitch. And again, you're doing it right on that edge. Take your apron band. You're going to fold it in half lengthwise wrong side to wrong side and then you're just going to press along the top here so you end up with a crease that goes down the center of the band on one long side looking at the wrong side you're going to fold over and press a half inch here's the top edge that i pressed a half inch you're going to turn your band over so you're looking at the right side because next we're going to attach our straps so where we have the crease we're going to put our straps right next to that crease. So here's my crease. I'm going right next to it, but just below it and lining up the raw edges here. And you're going to baste a half inch away from that. And I'm going to do the same thing with my other strap on this side as well. With the basting stitch, you're going to use the longest stitch that your machine can do. You don't have to worry about doing any back stitching because this is just a temporary stitch to hold these in place. Flip the band over to the wrong side. If you pull out your straps, you'll notice that the sides tend to want to fold in like this. That's what we're going to do next. So on each side, I'm going to fold in the half inch and this part that we previously folded, you can go ahead, keep that folded and then fold it over again. So you're going to do the half inch and you're going to press it and do the same thing on this side. At the top of your apron, you're going to do two rows of basting stitches because we're going to end up gathering it. So I'm going to do my first basting stitch at the half inch and then do it at the quarter inch. And you're doing it for the full length of it. Don't do any back stitching because then it's going to be really hard to gather it if you do. Once you finish doing that, you're going to find the center of your apron. So this length, you can just fold it in half, find the center, and then mark it with either a fabric marker or with a straight pin, just put a pin there. And you're going to find the center of the band as well. So about right here. And you're also going to mark that either with a fabric marker or a pin. You can see I'm doing it on the side that is not folded up. So it's that side that has no fold. We need to get the top of our apron to fit the top of our band. Obviously, the apron is longer, so that's why we did the basting stitches, so we can start gathering this. So I'm grabbing my top threads here and then pulling the fabric to kind of gather it. And you want to make sure that it's evenly distributed. And I'm stopping here at the pin. I'm just going to do one side and then I'll do the same thing on the other side as well. So you don't have all your gathers in one section like right here and then this part's all flat. You just kind of want to distribute the gathering so it looks even. And once it looks pretty good, so I have my two pins marking the center, so I'm going to put them together. So it's going to be right side to right side. Pin it. I'm going to pin the end, and then I'm going to pin in the middle. Now this looks like I've, I've gathered maybe a little bit too much, so I'll let some of this out until it fits. And then once this is lying flat and it seems to fit, then I can go ahead and pin everything in between and do the same thing on the other side. Here it is all pinned up. So this is what it looks like if you look at the band side and then this is what it looks like on the back where it's gathered. I'm going to sew a half inch seam allowance right along the top and that's gonna lock all our gathering in place. Now you'll notice that I'm keeping this side folded over so the edge on this side and this side, they're gonna stay folded and you're just gonna sew right over the folded side as you do your half inch seam allowance. Your seam allowance is going to stay closed and it's gonna go up towards the band. Now we're gonna fold our band in half. So remember we had this crease, so you should be folding directly in half on that crease. We have this folded edge up here on one side, so this is going to meet our seam or where our stitching line is that we just created. So if I fold that, now you can see I'm folding right on that crease. So I'm going to go ahead and remove these pins because they're just going to get in the way. And I'm going to fold the whole band in half and pin it. Next I'm going to slip stitch on three sides. So the two short sides where the straps are and then the side where we have the apron sewn to the band. Now we're doing the slip stitch in order to hold everything in place and we can look at the front 
and do a top stitch as our last step without having a bunch of pins in place in, in the back. It just makes it a little bit easier even though it does take a little bit more time. So I'm using a contrasting thread on my little hand needle here just so it's a little bit easier to see but you definitely want to use a matching color. And for the strap I'm just grabbing a little bit of the strap fabric and you can just do one layer instead of going through the full strap and going through the back layer. So I just grabbed a little bit of that and then I'm going to grab a little bit of my pink fabric here which is part of the band and I'm grabbing some fabric that's right on the fold so it won't be as noticeable. So I'm actually just finishing up with my, my band here or my strap here and then I'm going to grab a little bit of the strap, pull it through and then a little bit of the band. Now that I'm past the strap though, I'm going to have to actually get both sides. I'm going to get this strap and get this bottom part of the band here. So let's just grab a little bit of the folded edge here, pull it through and then down here. So you can see I'm just zigzagging between the two sides. And if you pull it, it'll make it less noticeable. And mine's a little bit more noticeable because it's black thread, but you're not going to notice it. So now I'm on the bottom, so now I'm going to go to the top. So I'm going to finish this side and then I'm just going to repeat the process going this way. So if I lift up this way, I'm going to grab a little bit of the pink band, then a little bit of the top of my apron, then a little bit of the pink band and a little bit of the top of the apron. You're going to do that for all three sides. Lastly, to finish off, you're going to do a top stitch around the whole band. You can see that's my white stitching here. I'm getting right on that edge and I'm looking at the right side when I'm doing it. To finish off your new apron, make sure to remove any visible basting stitches and wear your new vintage style apron with pride. Here's another one I made that I embellished with hand embroidery from a vintage transfer. This really gives it an authentic look and you can learn how to do it too by watching our other tutorial, Hot Iron Transfer. Just because an apron is practical, it doesn't mean it can't also be beautiful. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe to get notified of our weekly releases. Also check out ProfessorPincushion.com to view our complete library with well over 350 sewing tutorials. If you would like to directly support us, you can check out our Patreon campaign and earn some exclusive perks. Thanks for watching.